Welcome to another episode of Peers Over Beers, your favorite digital and social evangelist podcast with your industry veteran hosts, Chris Tetzel. This podcast starts now. Welcome to another Peers Over Beers. I'm Chris Detzel, and we have longtime guest Nicole Saunders. Nicole Saunders. Nicole, how are you today? I'm good. It is like full on summer in Wisconsin. We skipped spring and we went from like 65 degrees to 90 degrees. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, that's that's the way here. That's the way it is in Texas this year, too. Um, yeah. it's just, I think it was 99 degrees yesterday. Probably the Ooh. same today. Who knows? But yeah, 90 degrees is hot for Wisconsin, right? It is in May. We usually hit this in like late yeah. July, early August. So. Same. I don't know. I, I like summer, so I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> you know, I, I used to not like summer, but uh, I mean, it's really hot at 100 degrees. But, you know, cold, I'm not a big fan of the cold. I, I, I realized that the last few years, I'm just like, I don't even want to go outside, you know? Yep. It's yep. kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so during our pre-show, we talked a little bit about, um, you guys had an event that came up and, um, you know, a user conference and talking a little bit about that. And then, um, you brought up kind of this cross collaboration type thing yeah. that you guys are starting to do more of, and that you're super excited about. And we'd love to kind of one touch upon the user event and how that went and, you know, what were some of the goals and things like that of this user event and love to start about there if you want and then we'll go into the cross collaboration stuff yeah that sounds great um so yeah on on wednesday of this week on may 11th we had zendesk relate which is our big you know used to be our annual user conference where thousands of people would fly in from all over the world and we'd talk about all this cool stuff and the last time we had one scheduled in person it was supposed to be in miami at the beginning of march 2020 and okay yeah we were one of those conferences that like you know everybody was seeing stuff shut down and uh, mm. it got canceled, you know, the day before we were all supposed to <laughs> fly Jeez. down there and see each other. We'd done all the planning and everything. And so that was kind of a disappointment and we didn't end up doing one last year. And so this year we brought it back mostly virtual. There was a little bit of hybrid oh, yeah. activity as far as like, there's a few on the ground uh, things in San Francisco and London, okay. um, but it's still mostly virtual presentation. But what was cool about it this year is the community was a much bigger part of it than we ever have been before. Okay. Um, in the past, we'd have like a little booth in the expo hall or there'd just be a side <laughs> yeah. mention. And we actually got like a little segment in the main presentation this time. We got to wow. feature some of our like top members of the community talking about the impact that the community's had on them. Um, and we're getting ready to launch user groups for the first time at Zendesk this summer. And wow. so we were able to plug that and really, really share about that with our customers. Um, and it was just really exciting to see the community kind of finally make it onto the main stage and be in the spotlight for a few minutes. I got a few questions. So one, congratulations. Yeah. That's that's Thank a you. huge success. And um, a couple of questions and just one for now, but what, what made you, how did the community all of a sudden, maybe it's not all of a sudden because you've been doing a lot of work for the last couple of years. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but what was kind of the main kind of breakthrough for community to be on that center stage? What, what did yeah. you do and how That's did that happen? That's a great question. So <laughs> to your point, it does feel like all of the sudden after five <laughs> years of groundwork, right? Yeah. Well, um, you've ha you haven't had an event for uh, two years. So true, there's been true. that too, you know, but there's got to be some value that you've built and some kind of thinking and, and your, your team has grown a ton in the last right. couple of years, at least. And so would love to kind of, if there's two or three things that you think that, you know, kind of really drove you the community to the top of that, you know, list of, you know, you guys are now maybe not at the seat of the table, but at least being thought of and being part of a, an entire event. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we, we sort of started out saying, okay, we're gonna talk about events and talk about collaboration, yeah. but they're actually super related. The yeah. reason that we were got to be mm -hmm. part of this is because we have been working so collaboratively and so cross-functionally with the teams that plan this event. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you know, we moved out of our support organization and into the integrated marketing team mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago at Zendesk, which again, was a result of a lot of cross-functional work that I was doing in the marketing organization. Mm -hmm. But we actually now sit on the same team as the global events team, the folks that run yeah. webinars and the folks that would run this conference. 
as um, we're sort of like the digital experiences subset within integrated marketing. And okay. so to that end, there was sort of a natural fit in that my manager is also the person that manages the team that runs this event. And so there's a very natural that connection helps. there. But, yeah. you know, I don't want to like make that sound like, oh, just, yeah, of course, because I report to this person. It was no, also it, because yeah. we really clearly articulated this is why community is important. This is why community is relevant to this audience. And here are the things that we want to do. And what was amazing, um, so my team, we offered, we jumped in and said, hey, do you guys need help moderating the chat? Hmm. Right? You're going to have thousands and thousands of people in this virtual event. Of course they need help. So yes. Responding, right? And like they had some people lined up. But they were so grateful to have us. Yeah. And we're kind of experts in how to talk to customers online. Moderate right? conversations, yeah. Exactly. And so we showed up with resource lists and FAQs and we were ready to go. And it gave us a great opportunity to point to the community where other people that were moderating the chat might not have always thought of it. Right. Yeah. Um, and say, oh, hey, you know, in addition to the answer that they just provided, here's a community conversation where that's also being discussed. Ooh, I like and that. so we can we can point that over and kind of tie that all together. Um, but it was it was that stepping up and volunteering to help and volunteering yeah. to support it. And it was so cool because in the chat, there were all these customers, <laughs> they should have to like kind of put a stop to this after a little while because it was getting spammy, but everybody was like, I would love to connect with other Zendesk users. And everybody was posting <laughs> their LinkedIn profiles, yeah. um, which got a little bit too much. But I was like, this is amazing. Look at all of these people that are sitting here saying, I want to connect with other users. How do I do it? Yeah. And we were right there being able to say, hey guys, you know what? Let's not spam each other on LinkedIn. Everybody go on over to the community and follow each other there. Log in there and this whatever. Great yeah. space. You can all find each other. Uh, so that was that was really cool. It was really exciting to see that. And it was funny because it was one of those connections that like in the past when they've done webinars and things, I don't know that there's ever been that moment of like, hey, if y'all want to connect, here's the place to do that. And because we had stepped up and volunteered and were there, we were able to, to help point customers to that resource. Did you see a lift in uh, registrations or whatever and users coming yeah. to the community that day? It's yeah, cool. it wasn't um, quite as big a bump as I might have yeah. hoped for. Um, yeah. The thing to always keep in mind with these things is people show up to them for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And yeah. there's so much information that gets thrown at them, right? They're getting yeah. all the information in the chat, links to the community, links to user groups, links to yeah. product announcements, links to sales things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. and. The cool thing is, like, I think we're going to continue seeing it. I think we're going to see a residual thing because, one, since it was recorded, I think a lot of people will end up watching it after the fact. And so instead of it being like a one-day thing and it's over, we may see residual effects from this for a while. And then the other thing that we did that I'm super excited about and super proud of was we went through and we figured out what all of the features and product releases and things that were getting announced at the conference were. And then we went ahead and scheduled deep dive events like AMAs awesome. in the yes. community over the next couple of weeks, because of course at a big conference like this, each of these things gets their like three minutes on stage, right? Yeah, hey guys, we're doing this thing, yep. look for more information soon. And yep. then we were able to jump in the chat and be like, and join us in the community next week for an AMA with this products manager. And that's, I think just been like a really great connection. But again, it wouldn't have come out if we weren't being cross-functional with the events team, with the product team, yep. with all of the people that were putting this content together. Yeah. It's it, obviously, I, I think community is a great place, you know, for to go on those deep dives into the uh, into those new um, features that come out. That's I've been doing that, you know, ever since I was at Imperva. Because the thing is, you know, they'll, they'll spend an hour on the product release, and it's really cool stuff. And it's just like you say, two minute things around each release or each, you know, enhancement or whatever it is, new feature, you know, and and it's like, dude, this seems really good. Can we go on a deep dive? And they're like, yeah. What I do is, and I'm sure you guys do some of this, is on those, you call them AMAs. I, I kind of put them as AMAs, but I tell the product manager to say, you know, hey, we need to go a little bit deep. Let's say about 10 minutes, 20 minutes worth of stuff about this. Um, and then, you know, people are just going to ask a bunch of questions. You know, that's just yep. what's going to happen. This way, I don't have to do a lot of, you know, pre-questions and everything else because it just then becomes supernatural. You know what I mean? Because sometimes they don't know what to ask until they hear more about the feature. Um, exactly. And so we do the same kind of thing, like a little sort of like give them a little taste, it. give it a yeah. little bit more information. Also, not everybody coming to the event, like they may have missed the previous yeah. announcement, right? Yeah. So you got to do that sort of recap for them. Um, but they've been really popular and we found that there's not a lot of other places that customers can get that like 
how mm-hmm. to implement it, right? Nope. There's a ton of marketing information out there. And there's a ton of stuff in sales about why you should get this and the some cool things that you do. that goes, here's some code and how to do all this stuff. Yeah, you know? but like when it's like, hey, let's talk through this and I need to see a demo and like, how do I set it up? And when's the right time to do that? And all of those pieces, we find that there's just such rich conversations that we're able to have. I think it's also access to the PMs. So what community yeah. brings like for Reltio is never before have you had a chance to talk to your peers. Never before have you ever had access live with the product managers, with the PS team, with, you know, our CTO uh, at scale, right? You know, like now 50, 80 people can come to these things, to these webinars and have access, direct access to these people, you know, if you want, you know, and, and so those things are highly valuable and people love that stuff, you know, so um, love, love that you're doing that. Um, and then you mentioned user groups and we'll get to the cross-functional thing here in a minute, but um, you're starting that um, this summer. What, what is, what does that mean? And, and how do you, I know what it means, but you know, people kind of look at user groups in different ways, I think. And how, what do you do? You know, like, is it a bunch of user groups in different areas? Or are you using some kind of tool? You know, what, tell me a little bit more about that. Like your five minute thing around user groups. Yeah. I'm so very interested in this too. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so we are really trying to create those opportunities for, for customers to connect with each other and for them to take leadership roles. And so mm. Um, we are using Bevy. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's such a great purpose-built tool for exactly this kind of thing um, to facilitate it. And at the moment, what we're doing is we've, we've got a form out there where customers can fill out and say, okay, this is, this is where I am, and this is the language I speak, and this is my level of experience, and here's who I want to talk to. And now that we're in this hybrid world where we can take advantage of um, virtual activities as well, we're not limiting user groups to location, right? Like historically, yeah. you think back on mm-hmm. user groups, you're thinking like, oh, here's the Denver user group, here's the Chicago user group, and they meet up at a bar or a restaurant and everybody does demos and networks, right? Um, so we're gonna allow that and we're gonna facilitate that, but we're also sure. letting people say, hey, I wanna talk to other knowledge managers or I wanna talk to other Zendesk users in the public sector or in higher ed, or oh, you know, I, I wanna yeah. talk to other developers. And so we're gonna let people sort of self-organize, right? Kind of taking the <laughs> the motto, a, a cue from Reddit where it let people say, here's who I want to get together with and here's who I, what I want to talk about. And they create their subreddit and there you go. Um, so we're letting users tell us who they want to connect with. And then as soon as we get to 50 people that are interested in a topic or a sector or a location, we're going to reach out to all of them and say, hey, your user group's launching. We're looking for a leader. We'll, we'll recruit and onboard and train that leader and help them out with their first couple of meetups. And then they're good to go. We'll provide them the, the technology mm-hmm. platform. We'll provide them the marketing materials um, on a quarterly basis. We're going to have a little town hall for all of our group leaders and share, like you know, here's some stuff that's coming up at Zendesk and here's some, some content and some themes you can follow if you want, if it's appropriate for your group. If your group wants to talk about other stuff, that's fine too. Um, but we want to make it really easy for for these groups to be successful. And there's yeah. just been a ton of excitement about it. You know, every week we're hearing from people that are really yeah, I'll excited. be very interested to see how it goes. Yeah, because yeah. I'm I'm very interested to know more about this and maybe go deeper at some point because you know, this kind of goes along the lines of, you know, community led growth and the things that I'm talking about. Like, I mean, this is within yep. your community that's using probably uh, Zendesk and things like that. But you know, I also want to kind of think about you know, for us, like Realtio being kind of the, when I think of community, I've got this technical community that are talking about, you know, Realtio product and trying to solve problems on, you know, how to do this thing, which is good. You know, it's a very important piece, but there's also this huge community that we're not even talking to and, and getting to know uh, that is outside of Realtio, but that focuses in on those data problems and those data things that at some point could, you know, uh, could be a Realtio master data management type of conversation, right? And so, you know, how do you get those thought leaders, those influencers, uh, those industry experts within the data space to kind of really um, be part of that particular community and giving them opportunities to to speak to each other, to speak on, you know, uh, you know, put them on some podcasts, throw them, you know, in a live session like this, right? Like it's like you and me are doing this thing, right, about community leader stuff. Right. I want to do this with data people, you know, like I want to have a podcast video. I even want it live, you know, like let the other community people come in and let, uh, let them ask questions. 
but this could be on. Then you can reproduce the the content in both audio, video, quick hit. Then you create, you know, really good blogs and stuff like that. But you know, to me, it's uh, you know, there's a bigger community out there than just your your uh, just Realtio kind of or even Zendesk type of product community. Because I think you reach more users that way, and you and then now community now becomes a growth lever for your um, business, right? And then marketing exactly. loves you. So yeah, yeah. Um, no, and I mean that's something that we talk about a lot too. Is how do we move those conversations from just being these very like technical product specific things, which we never want to move completely away from by any means, right? Like we always want to give people that opportunity to do that. But how do we also talk about some of the bigger business problems that are more broadly applicable? What are the um, outcomes that you're getting from solving these data ch- these problems? You know, like you've been right. doing this for a while. You know, that's great. What are some of the problems that you've solved? What are the outcomes? Who else in the business? So it can't just be, who are you working in the business? Oh, you're working with marketing or you're working with some other, the data governance team that's not in IT to solve these problems and doing this, that, or the other, you know, and, you know, that kind of stuff is where I want to kind of get to. And so I think for me, I, I've been kind of talking to my leaders and I think the right way is to spend 30% of my time on this technical community. You know, I'm one person, so, you know, I can't do it all, but, but then spend 70% of my time of trying to really have these kind of conversations at the higher level uh, because, you know, uh, I think that's where the bigger bang for the organization for for the buck, you know, like I'm in marketing as well. So, you know, like I said, like, like you said, technical community is super important and there should definitely be focusing on that. But, you know, I think being in the marketing team and really trying to integrate with them directly for me is probably going to be more of around, you know, that thought leadership, stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, collaboration or, you know, uh, I guess cross-functional teams and dealing, you know, doing more of that. I mean, we, we I think community people do a really good job of that already, right? A hundred percent. I mean, you think about all of the aspects of a business that community can plug into, right? Maybe you're doing product feedback. So you're talking to product org. Mm-hmm. You're getting feedback, not just on the product, but on the experience with the company. And so you're talking to your voice of customer team. You know, most of us sit in marketing departments, and so we're, we're touched into all of those areas. Mm-hmm. A lot of communities are focused on technical support, so you're dealing with that. Maybe you've got a developer community. There's all of these parts of the business that we sort of naturally need to work with. And what I've really found, particularly as I've, I've gotten more senior in the company, is that I kind of have a, like a perch where I can kind of see across the business in a way that a lot of other teams and, and leaders don't necessarily have the opportunity to. They're pretty focused on their specific area. That's right. And so I really am able to see where there's redundancies happening or where there's connections that can be made. And so my team and I really made it our mission this year to be as collaborative as possible and to, mm. you know, find those opportunities where it's like, hey, did you know that there's six teams planning webinars based on product launches? Let's bring all of those together and make sure we're, co-planning and co-hosting and co-marketing those Mm. rather than every team having their own webinar where we're all fighting for (laughs) the opportunity to send an email to our customers to get them to register for our event. Yeah. I like that. We're actually for the first time next week, we're going to bring all of these teams together. We're going to co-plan our events for the second half of the year. And I'm so excited to do this. So I think it's, it's going to help everybody's programs be a little bit more successful and it's going to be way easier for customers. They don't care which team is running a webinar they don't need to have different registration methods and different websites no. and all of these things for, you know, here's six different ways to talk about one product. Um, so I just, I think it's, it's so key. And for us, what we've really seen as we've gotten more and more collaborative and more and more cross-functional is that, we aren't fighting for buy-in anymore yeah. and people are starting to think of us. And, you know, the conference is a great example of one of those outcomes where because we've been really making this effort to get out there and work with everybody and support their programs, we don't have to fight as hard for attention and for, you know, to be part of the conversation anymore. That's, that's awesome. I think, I mean, we kind of have that problem too, is, you know, you've got some folks in the marketing team working, you know, doing some webinars that are, you know, it's focused on Realtio stuff or, you know, like some industry specific uh, or vertical specific kind of stuff. Uh, the community is doing this webinar over here, products, we're doing kind of their own stuff. And, you know, it's like, how do you bring, some, not all of it, but how do you bring some of that together? Because some of them, there are some differences between the two, but 
you know, like you said uh, during our pre-show, you know, we're having webinars that are the same stuff, you know, and, and it's like, we're inviting the same customers to the same stuff, you know, like, <laughs> so. Well, I'll never forget, there's like a year ago where we had this one product manager that was gonna come be a guest speaker for our thing. Yeah. And as we were doing the prep stuff, he's like, oh yeah, this is just like how this other team is doing it. I'm doing theirs on Thursday. And we were like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are you well, doing two webinars on the same, same topic in the same week? At the same company. Like, yeah, I mean, look, one could be for prospects, right? And maybe community isn't focused sure. on a prospects and maybe there's a, a selling type of opportunity, you know, like some of our, mar one of our marketing person, uh, folks, her focus is using Bright Talk. And Bright Talk is a platform that, you know, you do webinars and then people, I guess, log into Bright Talk and there's the whole community of, or whole tons of people that they can, you know, reach out to, to, to get onto that. And so when I think of the community webinars, I don't really think of Bright Talk being in that, right? You know, it's mm -hmm. just, that's a different thing. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, that's, it, that has happened here too, you know, and, and I think, you know, I love that you're trying to do, was it you that did that or was somebody on your team that kind of brought it all together or how, how did that, is there a little story behind that or not really? Um, I, I would say, you know, the, the, the head of community, I've been sort of driving yeah. this as a strategic focus. Um, and it actually, like, it took a little while to get everybody on board and really to even help everybody think about how to do this. And I think part of it is because community, you're running in so many directions, right? Mm -hmm. You and I have talked in the past about how like, you know, eight meetings on eight completely different topics in the course of a day. You're, yeah. Now you're dealing with data. Now you're dealing with content. Now you're dealing with developers. Now you're dealing with strategy, right? That's and right. Um, something that I've noticed is that sometimes that's overwhelming for people. And when things get overwhelming, we tend to put on our blinders and be like, is this in my wheelhouse? Is this my area mm -hmm. of focus? If not, I don't want to know about it, right? we're getting information from all these teams, all these departments from the industry. And then like our community itself. And that's just a ton of communications time information. Yeah. But I've really encouraged my team to try to like take those blinders off mm -hmm. and poke your head up and look around and see what else is going on and look for those opportunities when you're in meetings with other teams or when you're in an all hands and you're hearing about things to say, Hey, I think the community can support that. And here's how. And of yeah. course, as leaders, we have to balance this with not getting overcommitted, which I think is maybe the hardest challenge for, for so many of us. Um, but I've just really sought out those opportunities of, you know, hey, where can we help? You know, and like the, the chat for the conference last week is a prime example. Nobody asked us to do that. Nobody else thought of us as great experts for it. But I was like, hey, you know what? This is a skill set my team has, and I'm sure you guys need help. So let's, let's go help with that. And it was a really good entry point to them saying, hey, yeah, what, what do you guys think about also maybe bringing community into the main stage for a few minutes? <laughs> and so you got to kind of create that goodwill and that awareness of what you're doing. But it's a tough skill set to build to really get good at identifying the opportunities to be cross-functional and then yeah. prioritize, okay, where can we really help? And where is it like, well, we could do a thing over here, but that's not going to be super impactful for anybody, you know? Yeah, I think... Um... It's interesting, and I love how you kind of encourage your team to really uh, be proactive and, and seek out opportunities. And the only thing I would add to that is, you know, as, as a leader, you have to kind of look at what are the priorities for community mm -hmm. for the year. I'm not saying, you know, you look at first, you look at the priorities of the community and, and see what you want to go after. And as a leader, I would think you would just have to say, these are the things you should seek out the most. But right. with that said, as you know, like, you know, I even tell my team this is, all right, we know that um, community and ideation go well together. Today, community and ideation and product aren't really there yet. But, you know, if you get in, on a call with, you know, one of the product leaders or you're talking to them, you know, definitely mention something like that because, you know, there's probably room in our roadmap to kind of start thinking about how to integrate ideation and, pro and, and things like that. But, you know, let's not overcommit. Uh, but let's have that discussion, you know, or whatever those things are. You give them examples. You you say, hey, look, that's probably not in the scope in the next three months, but certainly something we should think about and look at. Or if it's that important, maybe we can bring it in or, or something like that. And I think that, you know, to not overwhelm yourself, always go back to your roadmap, look at where you are, what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. And then once you do that, 
you know, and then obviously you communicate, your community people need to know this, right? And so those are the ones you go after first. And then secondly, because you're always having to have these conversations because, you know, community touches everything, you know, like right. almost everything. I even say HR, you know why? Because I'm developing people outside of, or inside of the company to be the leaders, uh, to be um, thoughtful. Like I'm counseling, not really counseling per se, but I'm, I'm talking to those folks on a daily basis, like this guy from PS, this guy's really awesome. You know, I encouraged him uh, when we first started to do these webinars and go deep into these webinars and people start asking him questions. And then all of a sudden he told me the other day, he goes, Chris, because of the community, um, you know, uh, I now, and I'm, I'm now really excited about what I do. People are now coming to me <laughs> internally and externally about, you know, uh, about matching and merging and things like that. And he goes, I never had that before because we can make them heroes. I want to make them heroes. And why? Because they're getting shit done for me. You know what I mean? Like, well, not to and be I selfish, love what but- you just raised there though, Chris, like, I think we think a lot about our customers, right? And, oh, how can we help yeah. them build their expertise? And how can we help them build their professional brands? Well, we can do that for internal folks too. Just like you said, do it we, all the time. we have a platform where we can shine a spotlight on people. And I know that for us, we do a lot of these events with our product managers and bringing them in and stuff. And for a lot of them, this is their first time public speaking, or this is their first time exactly. getting to do these things. And they're building this whole skill set and this expertise. And, you know, not everybody is super comfortable with it, but it's an important skill set to build and to learn how to do. And some of them are like, oh my gosh, I love this. Yeah. I want to do more of these things. I've discovered a new part of my job I didn't know existed. So I I love that, you know, and it really is true that community can really have positive impacts both internally and externally in that way. I agree. And I told this guy also, I said, hey, you know, you're very technically sound and you're really good at this and people love it and you're a pretty good speaker. And I said, now what you have to go do is learn the business side of this. If you go yeah. learn the business side of why these people are trying to solve these problems and you can speak upon that, I was like, dude, you could be like a CTO or whatever. If, I mean, the guy's young, he's super smart. And he goes, yeah. And he started thinking about that. I was like, Hey, I got, I've got a recording of the, uh, the count, the executive council and how they think and everything else. Why don't you listen to it and just think about that for a while, you know? And, and then, you know, I'll come because the, the nice thing about being a community leader is like you, you get to talk to so many people. You, you understand like yeah. what it takes to be more successful in their role. Not to say you can do their job because, you know, I, I'm not technically sound. I don't really care about that. But again, to me, it, it's about obviously you want to get your customers on a higher level. You want them to use your product and, and stuff like that. But I see it more in addition to, you know, uh, Grooming the next leaders, not of community, but of the, the not, not necessarily grooming, but giving people the opportunity to engage in the community, to engage with customers in, in, a, in, a, in a way to scale. So instead of one-on-one interactions, you're getting like questions and things like that from 60 people, right? Or potentially 60 or 80 customers and partners and things you've never uh, done before. And so it's just, it's fun to do that. And then I promote them, you know, I'll, I'll, hashtag on our hashtag community Slack channel. I'll, you know, say something about this person. They did this amazing job because of blah, 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 blah. And they did this, you know, and then I'll even go to their boss. Say, hey, this guy was really awesome. He did this thing. Oh my gosh. You know, I'll go to my CEO sometimes say, Hey man, you should probably at least just say thank you for, you know what I mean? Like just, it's just, you, you do that, then they'll do it again for you. You know what I mean? That's really why I do it. You know? Yeah. So, um, Anything else on the cross collaboration thing? I mean, it, this is really good. Yeah, I think a, a key hi- thing to highlight, like you said, is knowing what your priorities are. And it's so yeah. important that we know what our priorities are so that we can identify the places where, like, like you said, this is a good opportunity for me to collaborate. This is something that supports my roadmap. And like, that is a really cool thing that we should put on the backlog for the future. <laughs> and I like, <laughs> I know for us, one of our big goals this year was to be more strategic about our events and to try to increase attendance. And so starting to bring together all of these other teams and work with them on, hey, let's co-host events where we can, let's co-plan events where we can. And we're actually finding ourselves now in a role where we're advising some other teams that are like, yeah, we're seeing really low attendance at this event. We're like, oh, well, have you tried X, Y, Z? These are things that we've seen have worked really well in the community. And so, you know, that was a great match between something that was going on in the company where we're seeing all these redundant things and everybody's struggling with attendance 
yes. and our own goals on our roadmap and, and things that we were prioritizing this year. Um, we're also trying to, well, I shouldn't say trying to, we are <laughs> relaunching a customer advocacy program to really mm. help highlight those brand ambassadors. And we are co-hosting it with the customer marketing team, which sits sort of within a different part of our marketing organization. And we had a lot of conversations at first that were like, well, well, who's going to own this and who's going to lead it and how's it going to work? And we were really intentional about saying, we really want this to be a 50, 50 co-ownership hmm. joint thing. We want it to serve your needs. We want it to serve our needs. We're going to split the budget. Hmm. Uh, we're even looking at splitting a team member to, to sort of work on this project on both sides. And we're hopeful that it can become a model for how teams can work cross-functionally across the business. Um, because as you scale, it is so easy for teams to become increasingly siloed and focused on their own thing and less That's aware true. and get really almost like territorial or defensive about things. And we're like, you yeah. know, for the community to succeed, we can't be territorial. We got to share these things across. And so we're, we're, we'll have to keep you posted as we go through that launch and, and talk about how that, that model ends up working out. But I'm, yeah. I'm really excited about being able to demonstrate how this can, how it can work. Highly interested in that too, because I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but, but I think it's worth the discussion because, you know, I've always been kind of under their, under the impression there should be at least an owner of that, something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't have a cross-functional person help kind of run or guide or those kinds of things. Cause a lot of times, you know, if there's not an ownership between that thing and they're splitting their time, you know, they're, I mean, it's a hard thing to do. So I'll be very interested to hear about how that goes. I'm not saying it can't be done, but you know, because, um, I'll either have successes or, you yeah. know, things we learned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't will. Work or you probably will. both. <laughs> and the one thing I want to say about, um, your event thing and, and how you kind of created this cross collaboration thing. Um, what I think is, is, it's always better to have the power of a team or two with you rather and 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 kind of pushing out different things. Like for example, uh, exactly what you said, you have the power of many to help you get these things done, uh, then you'll have a lot more success. You know, today, I, you know, I think I talked a little bit about that um, industry led, you know, community led growth basically. And, uh, you know, and, and, and instead of me kind of going out like, I built the online community from scratch, from ground up, you know, and, and, you know, I just had to get people engaged and involved. Yeah, I had the organization, but it was pretty much me just kind of doing a lot of that. But if I go at that, if I go with this, at that approach, it's not going to work. If I don't have, um, you know, PMM, you know, the product marketing team, if I don't have uh, the, the communication team, which they're doing very much of a, um, you know, thought leadership type stuff with our CTO and founder, if I don't have, you know, the digital team all on board, you know, to, to help, you know, like the marketing machine on board in a sense, um, I have way more of a chance to fail, you know, and that can't be an option. And for me, that's, it's a little scary because I'm very good at just going to get shit done. You know, one of my challenges is, um, is, is it, is it, uh, collaborating cross-functionally? It's more of collaborating with, those leaders that, you know, the VP of PMM, our CMO, our, you know, his, his team and, um, and then the communication chief communication officer and what they're doing. And if, and if they say, yeah, let's go do it. And, but we need these high level things of what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to do the things I'm not really, you know, yeah, we're just trying to accomplish these things, you know, and if you have some really good strategic vision, a good strategic, you know, outline for them, and if they're on board, they're going to help you socialize it on social. They're going to help you market it through email. They're going to push things on the main website to get that out. They're going to just help you do a lot of different things at that level. And, and so those are the things I'm learning today. And I think it's highly important, Nicole. And, and I think it's really awesome that you guys are doing that. Yeah. To get that. I mean, and it is important to like raise some of the challenges of working cross functionally too, right? Oh, yeah. I think when you're doing things as a a team of one, or when you're doing things just within your own team, you can move much faster. Yeah, you can just exactly. do things the way you want to do them and you're <laughs> not burdened by other people's timelines, other teams' priorities, mm -hmm. the corporate process, right? Um, that's right. <laughs> it feels like everything we do these days, you got to like put out a proposal and that's got to get prioritized and, you know, all these things. And so it goes much slower. And I know that that 
was some resistance from some of the folks that I work with initially when we started doing cross functional things like oh man this was so much easier when I could just do it and now mm -hmm. I have to like wait on other teams and they've got other priorities yeah um and so you know I think it's important to call out that like collaboration is so important and you do get those additional resources and that additional visibility That's and right. it's overall going to be a better outcome for your customers but it's also true that like it takes some effort to identify those opportunities to prioritize the right things and then to actually keep the project moving forward um i think a key to that is you know we talked about knowing your priorities and showing mm -hmm. up to recognize things but also always showing up with a point of view mm -hmm. um i think the biggest mistake that i see people make is they're like okay i want to be collaborative and they show up to the meeting like all right so what should we do and it's like no you should show up and say hey guys here's how I think we should collaborate. Here's how I think we can work together. I've spent some time looking into your program. Here's how we can contribute. That is so and good. That is, I completely agree. It is such a key. It is such an important aspect of it. And so, you know, I'm, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of research and reading right now, and I'm looking forward to starting to put out some more materials about like how to work cross-functionally. Cause we all talk about the importance yeah. of it, but we don't always talk about those challenges or like what that really means and, and mm. what's the legwork you need to do to make it happen effectively you're today you're just speaking my language is so crazy um and, and it's because i've had a lot of these conversations as of recent um yeah like one of the conversations was you know i i also own the relto executive council right and so mm -hmm. there's always recruiting that goes on because people fall off there's agendas you have to build there's all kinds of different things you have to do and everything else and so and and the other piece is yeah i have to work with my executives here at relto to contribute content to you know like we have our cto and founder you can imagine how busy that dude is right like but i have to get on his calendar and say hey what do you think the agenda should be you know or how do you think we should recruit i gotta talk to our chief customer officer hey we're looking at recruiting these people you know what do you think about whatever you know and, and they and same with the cmo and, and so they give these high level views right and i'm like all right so i'm gonna take a different approach and so my approach now is you said it perfectly is you have to have a point of view and it actually, actually could be completely wrong like it doesn't matter like you just say hey this is what um, i think like from a recruiting standpoint here's a list of accounts this is how much i spend this is you know the opportunity um and here's the names and everything else um here's the list should i go after those and if and and i would say something like if you say yeah if you say no or if you don't say anything i'm going to assume this is the list if you do say um something great you know we'll change the list we'll do whatever you say you know it doesn't matter and so that's what you have to do is you come up with kind of the process the thing you think it should be even if it's completely wrong just come up with the point of view and let them react and then change it from there you know like because exactly but you have to show up with something for people exactly. to respond to right because they don't know nobody knows they don't know <laughs> you know like yeah. so it's like just make some shit up you know and uh <laughs> I mean, see what they say. it's best to show up with what you think is actually going to work. But if you yeah, don't but, know, I mean, yeah, come up with an idea. Look, show up with something for people to work with. Fair enough. Show what's going to work. Like, <laughs> if you know, you know, be smart about it, you know, but at this, but you're still making some shit up, you know, at the same time, right? right? right. Like, you know, that's just the way. You're making like, you know, an informed guess. Yeah. Like, here's what I think based yeah. on me talking to people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I made I made that whole list up, and and I had a I just created a process, and no no one was against it, and I was like done. And that's how I'm going to go recruit. <laughs> you know, there I you mean, go. you know, and then I sent out to salespeople and CSMs and say, hey, who are the people here at this account that you know I should go after, kind of stuff. But you know, I, I think it, it's just so so right the point of view thing, and you know that was just right on my mind because I've been yeah. it's funny I've been telling that same story that you just said. Uh, to others is like, well, you know, somebody had come to me, well, Chris, I can't really get by in it. Well, just, just come up with the point of view, like you said, and, you know, present it and see what they say, you know, and, and let them react. It, all it is is giving people something and then they can think about, you know, a better approach, you know? Well, so, and you need a starting point for the conversation. And if you yeah. show up with a point of view, you show up with a recommendation, yeah. you're now leading that conversation. You're yeah. driving that. And to me, like I always want to be driving the activity and driving the conversation. I don't want to be in the back seat of somebody else's car. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it it's really smart to give some good thought to the things that you want to accomplish and how you think it should happen, and then show up to your people and say, "All right, 
here's what I think should happen. And here's how I think we can work on it together. And you're just going to get so much further. And, you know, when we think about leadership too, that's, that's really what leadership is about is that's right. showing up with a vision and then getting everybody on board and adjusting a little bit to accommodate, you know, whatever other perspectives or questions come up and then making it happen and really driving it forward. Yeah. This is a great conversation, Nicole. Yeah. Really appreciate I, it. I always love these conversations. They just go back so fast. They do. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is already done. So, um, well, thanks everyone for coming to another Peers Over Beers. I'm Chris Detzel and I'm Nicole Saunders. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks. Have a great day.